In this video, we will be talking about the greatest integer function. The symbol that we'll be using is the two brackets on the left and the two brackets on the right. The definition of the greatest integer function is y is the greatest integer which is less than or equal to x. So, for example, the greatest integer of 0 0.3 is 0. If we look at just the number line, zero point three is about here and so what we want to do is find the integer that's to the left of that point so that's how we arrived at zero as the greatest integer of zero point three one point four is about here and so if we look to the left we see that 1 is the greatest integer that's less than 1.4 negative 1.6 is about here so we can see that the integer that's to the left of that point is negative 2. And then if we look at 5, of course, less than or equal to, so 5 is the greatest integer of 5. So let's look at a few uh, x values and then we'll plot these points. Anytime x is an integer, the greatest integer of 0 is 0. Point 0.2 would be about, point 0.2 would be to the right of 0 on the number line. So the greatest integer of point 0.2 is going to be 0. 0.5 is also in between 0 and 1. So the greatest integer for 0.5 is going to be 0. 0.9 is still in between 0 and 1. So the greatest integer of 0.9 is 0. But then once we hit 1, the greatest integer of 1 is 1. 1 1.2 is between 1 and 2, so the greatest integer of 1.2 is 1. And likewise with 1.5, that's between 1 and 2, so the greatest integer of 1.5 is 1. Now let's look at the graph of these values and see what this looks like. When x is 0, y is 0. When x is 0 0.2, y is 0. When x is 0 0.5, y is 0. When x is 0 0.9, y is 0. But then when x is 1, y is 1. When x is 1.2, y is 1. When x is 1.5, y is 1. So all of these numbers, again, there's an infinite number of numbers between 0 and 1. All of these numbers are going to be on the graph of our greatest integer function. But then once x is 1, 
I don't plot the point here, I, I have to hop up or step up to the next y value. So I have to show this with an open circle at x equal 1 to show that when x is equal to 1, this part of the graph is not shown. It's up here. Likewise, on this uh, y value, when y is 1, I have an open circle on the right side here to show that when x is 2, my y value is 2. And so the pattern continues. All of these are going to be part of my graph until I hit x equals 3. And then I have to step up to y equals 3. Again, I'm going to have all of these numbers on my graph. But when x equals 4, I have to step up to this next y value. And this continues like this. Now we can look at it going to the left as well. When x is negative 1, my y value is negative 1. So remember then that the left endpoint is solid and the right endpoint is an open circle to show that I'm not graphing there, I'm graphing up to the next step. So for uh, x equal negative 2, my y value is negative 2, and all of these values in between all have a y value of negative 2, but on the right side I have an open circle. And let's continue this pattern. Now we can see on this one that our domain is all real numbers. Our range is just integers. I'm going to write this as y is uh, the set of all y's such that y is an element of the set of integers. 